focus on Jamie. That's Dave. That's Heath. We're looking at the quarterback and running back waiver wire options for you for week number 12. Let's start with the quarterbacks that you're looking to add for this week. And remember, the big story that we're following is Justin Fields and his shoulder situation. So these guys might be replacement options for you if you are stuck. Ryan Tannehill appears to be the prize, but the guys might have a different spin on this list. And again, we usually talk about players that are rostered in 65% of leagues or fewer. So the guys you see at the bottom there are more for super flex and two quarterback leagues in Joe Flacco, Bryce Perkins, and Trevor Simeon. But we do not want to see Trevor Simeon take a snap for the Bears unless absolutely, absolutely desperately needed by Chicago because we've got to see Fields out there. All right, let's talk about Ryan Tannehill here. So he's coming off back-to-back -back games with 23 fantasy points. As I continue to say, I don't know how it happens, but he finds a way to get it done. Four of seven healthy games so far this season, 20 or more fantasy points. And it was against Denver and Green Bay on paper, tough matchups. Who does he have in week 12? The Bengals, on paper, a tough matchup. Will Ryan Tannehill come through enough to the point where you guys feel comfortable to start him in not just deeper leagues, but in shallow formats, even if you don't necessarily need a quarterback, but he might be the best option on your team? He's absolutely in the streaming conversation because of what he's been doing the past few weeks, and he's playing efficient football. Last Two games ago, he made great work with Westbrook Akine. Last week, it was Traylon Burks. This is a Titans offense that knows that they have to throw the football a little bit more, and they're attacking downfield still occasionally, not as much as like the Chiefs or the Chargers or the Bucks would do, but certainly enough where it's a little bit different, it's a little noticeable, and those are things that will help Ryan Tannehill find the numbers that you were referring to. Yeah, if I've got Justin Fields, that's the first quarterback that I'm looking to get off the waiver wire. I he has done it in his last two games. I'm always worried there's going to be a game like the two games before that where he throws 20 or 21 passes and scores you 12 fantasy points. So he's, That's the game he left, though. Right. Well, he's he done that multiple times this season, though. He's done uh, that plenty right. of times over, over the last three years. Um, I, I don't have a streamer in my top 15, so there's not any quarterback that I actually like. It's nice to not have any bye weeks. But if you're the fields manager, where are you going? I would go with Kenny Pickett. Pickett. Okay. Yeah, so 19 let's, and 17 the last let, two let, weeks. Let's go right there. So Kenny Pickett has got a... Interesting matchup against the Colts. They've been suspect at times against quarterbacks. A lot of it's been rushing production. And the thing for Pickett that's nice is two of his last three games, 37 or more rushing yards. So he's just missing that second touch. I'm with you. I like right. Pickett as well, but I think Tannehill's at least proven. Right. But, but sell me on Pickett. Yeah, it's, it's the fact that he scored 19 and 17 fantasy points the last two weeks with only one touchdown. He did have the rushing production. I wish we would have saw it last week against Cincinnati as well. I'd feel even better about it. But I think he has 40, 50 yard rushing upside. And it's just kind of strange that he hasn't got that second touchdown the last couple of weeks with the production he had. I thought he looked made some better decisions last week as a passer. I think this Colts run defense is pretty good. I think the Steelers might have to throw it more than they want to in this game. I tend to agree. I think he played well last week. And think about, there were two throws. One would have been called back by a penalty anyway. But two throws downfield to Pickens. If one of those two throws actually do count, then his numbers are great. And we're talking about Pickett potentially ahead of Ryan Tannehill. So I don't disagree that he's not a bad option. But I do think that Tannehill is safer. And that's why I would rather go with him. But it gives you options if you've got Justin Fields and you're in a fab league. You don't have to spend all of your fab this week on Tannehill. You can go cheaper on Tannehill, and if you don't get him, oh, too bad, you can go and get Ryan Pickett, or Kenny Pickett, Ryan Pickett. Thinking Where's that your, name from? Your son. <laughs> Who's that? Who's Ryan. that guy? Ryan. Oh, yeah. Um, a couple other guys on this list I think are worth discussing. Taylor Heineke, now that he's locked in as the starter for Washington, and Jacoby Brissett has got at least one more opportunity to be the starter for the Browns. We'll start with Heineke in a matchup against the Falcons. That's favorable. They allow 21.1 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. So where do you come out with Heineke for this week? I, I like Heineke. I'm not sure they're going to let him throw enough. I think right. he's going to have to have one of those efficient games because they are able to run the ball, and you can run the ball against the Falcons, and especially the Falcons' offense now without Kyle Pitts. I just don't know that they score enough points against a Washington front that has just been spectacular lately. So I think Heineke is right in in that same range. I'd probably go Pickett, Heineke, Tannehill, again, all in that 15 to 20 range. Heineke has scored 28 fantasy points in his last three games combined, two back-to-back -back games with under eight fantasy points, so he's not exactly getting right. the job done from a statistical standpoint, but another guy who's just missing touchdowns, and so we'll see if that happens against the Falcons, because he's throwing about 27 times a game. He's just not finding the end zone with any regularity, because as you said, the run game has been good. And then for Jacoby Brissett, Dave, he's got three games in a row with at least 18 fantasy points. He's coming off of his best game, as you see here, against the Bills with 30 fantasy points, and he knows this is most likely his last start of the season, because in week 13, Deshaun Watson is able to play. So not the easiest matchup on paper against Tampa Bay, but they've been decent in terms of allowing minimal production. When I say minimal, minimal to a high end you know, standpoint against production, about 19 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. Sure, on the year that's been the case, but 23 or more fantasy points to two of the past three quarterbacks they face. They don't have Sha Shaq Barrett anymore rushing the quarterback. And I wonder if this is Brissett just saying, all right, this is going to be my last time playing 
this season. Go yellow. I'm going to let it all hang out in this game. And I think they're going to need to throw at some point in this game because they're playing Tampa Bay and because that Cleveland defense is so bad. So it's his last hurrah. He'll go out there and play. I do like him better than Kenny Pickett, and I think it's close between him and Tannehill this week. Yeah, there, there's, there's certainly the ability, as we've seen, plenty of upside, and the receiving core is playing well. Uh, it's a home game for Amari Cooper, so you're going to get that benefit, and we'll see if Donovan Peoples-Jones continues to play a high level. So some decent quarterback options. There's not a star among this group, but there are some guys you could pivot to. Again, if Fields does not play, he's the big quarterback that's not going to be potentially available to us because there are no more teams on a bye for this scoring period. The quarterbacks that you could be moving on from, I would start all the guys that we talked about over Russell Wilson at this point, 83% rostered, easy to get away from him, and Matthew Stafford at 61% rostered. Who knows, again, if he's going to play for the upcoming scoring period or even the rest of the year his second time in the concussion protocol since week nine. The running back stat as we transition to that position, some fun names on this list. You got Latavius Murray and Samaj P. Ryan as the prizes. One could potentially be long-term in Murray. One could be just the short-term in P. Ryan. At least that's what we hope as a Joe Mixon fantasy manager would love to have Mixon coming back sooner rather than later. Jared McKinnon's in a good spot with Kyder was a dealing with a high ankle sprain. James Cook coming off his best performance of the season, 11 carries for 86 yards. Cam Akers with Daryl Henderson a little bit banged up, dealing with knee injury. And then Isaiah Spiller, for now at least, is the number two running back for the Chargers. We'll see what happens when Joshua Kelly is able to return. Let's talk about the two guys at the top here. So we'll start with P. Ryan. So, Keith, you said you prefer P. Ryan over Murray. Why? It's the role in the passing game, I think. And it's a better offense, too. Like, they might score four touchdowns, five touchdowns. If the Broncos score two touchdowns, they'll throw a parade. I, and the fact that they've thrown eight passes per game to Joe Mixon and Samaj P. Ryan. If Jamar Chase is back, maybe that comes down just a little bit. That's still a pretty established role. So in full PPR, it's just pretty easy for me to put P. Ryan as a top 12 running back, honestly. I don't have him that high, but I do like his potential to be good this week. We just don't know if he's going to get the opportunity to do it, and that's why I've got to put Latavius ahead of Well, who, who would have a better opportunity, though? What do you mean a better opportunity? You mean if Mixon plays? If Mixon oh, plays, yeah, 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 that's right. what I meant. Like, right. if Joe Mixon right. plays, yeah. what is Piran going to He's going to give you five or six touches. Oh, it's definitely a, only if Mixon is out. Right. But that's what you're banking on. Is or Mixon if Murray is already rostered in your league, in that case, Piran's there. You don't really oh, have I much I would much choice. rather have James Cook or Jared McKinnon than Piran if, if Mixon's For what? Playing. For rest of season? No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're having two separate conversations. That's my fault for not communicating properly. If Murray's already rostered, mm -hmm. Piran's on your waiver wire, Who's the priority at running back for this week when you go to make your waiver moves? It, it, it's P Ryan, but if you right. tell if we find out before tonight's waivers moves, and certainly by tomorrow, that Mixon's moves, okay. Then Mixon oh, is dude, P Ryan goes to the P. back of the line. Is, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know if he'd be at it to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, I think the interesting thing though, Heath, in terms of this matchup. The right. Titans are amazing against running backs. The last time they allowed a running back to score on the ground was week one with Saquon Barkley. Two touchdowns allowed to running backs on the season. So it could might be, it might be better for Murray even in the worst situation based on his offense right. because his matchup is much better against the Panthers. Um, for Murray, though, let's project this out more than just this week because if Mike Boone does return, you know, Dave, we talked about this on a podcast. Uh, you mentioned Marlon Mack, Keith. They still may go out and add somebody, and Chase Edmonds may return at some point. So how long is the window of Latavius Murray, Keith, in terms of being at least a flex? I mean, I think unless they until it's until they add somebody that you can honestly see a reason that they might take jobs from. Like they're not competing. They went and got Latavius Murray. They cut bait with Melvin Gordon. It seems pretty obvious they're planning on giving him 20 touches. We've got a lot of these guys, Najee Harris, James Conner, who look like they're in line for 15 to 20 touches and aren't going to be very efficient with those touches. I think he fits right in with those guys. I don't know if you want to put Harris in there. He's been efficient the last two weeks from right. a running standpoint. You know? right. So he's looked a lot better. So maybe take him out of that group. But he is getting a lot. I put Mike Montgomery in that group. You know, guys yeah. getting a lot of work that's mm. just not very efficient with those touches. Uh, the, the other two guys on this list, Dave, uh, James Cook and Cam Akers, um, I think differing situations. Cook, uh, yeah. for example, could be a lottery ticket if something happens to Devin Singletary. And now you got a very strong performance from him against the Lions. A11 carries 86 yards. They ran the ball the best as they have all season. And you've seen them run the ball a little bit better the last two weeks with Josh Allen's elbow injury. So short week, where is James Cook going to? factor in from a short-term scenario and then a long-term scenario, they do get the Lions. It's a great matchup. This it week. is a great matchup, and I think he's going to have the opportunity to see as many as 10 touches per week. They've got to like what they've seen from him over his past two games. They know that he's got fresher legs compared to other running backs, certainly on their team and across the NFL. They traded for Naheem Hines, and we thought, well, this is the end of the line yeah. for James Cook. And guess what? It was just the beginning. James Cook is certainly going to be someone who factors in a small amount in Buffalo's offense. But if something were to happen to Devin Singletary or if Singletary struggles, they're going to go right to James Cook, and he could be a league winner. That's the type of lottery ticket that you can go and pick up and put on your bench for the rest of the way. 
Cam Akers is a lottery ticket too, but it's only to win like five bucks. You're not going to get any great prize out of it. He could end up being a running back that you'll use as a number three option, maybe a non-PPR flex. I am not that encouraged about his opportunities moving forward, but he did look good last week, and he does deserve credit for at least that. But this offense could be a real mess rest of season. And, and taking on the Chiefs could be ugly. Just real quick, on the other side of the ball there for the Chiefs, Jarek McKinnon, now that there's Clyde Edwards-Alaire looking at maybe a multiple-week absence, I think McKinnon could be superstar from the standpoint of if something happens to Pacheco. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, and it might just be that they're just kind of waiting to unleash McKinnon. He's been the guy they've played whenever they've got into a mess. They think he's their most valuable running back right now. It's just you've got to be in a situation for this week in particular. I don't know how many times. They're, they only threw one pass to him last week. Yeah. I don't know if there's a lot of pass attempts against the Rams Agreed. team. He's got an implied total of 13 this right, right now. So. I like him for as kind of like that James Cook, a potential lottery yeah. ticket for the fantasy playoffs. I don't really want to use him this week. Who do you guys like better between those two? McKinnon. McKinnon. So. But I, I think there's also the standpoint of no Juju maybe. Right. No Hardman for another three weeks. Who knows if Tony plays. Maybe McKinnon's rolling the passing game gets back on track. And there was a play where uh, they put Pacheco in. It was, they were backed up in their own end. Uh -huh. On pass blocking, <laughs> Derwin James killed him. Mm -hmm. And then immediately he was off the field. Uh, so there's the situation. Here are the running backs are moving on from easy move on from these three guys. Gordon not on the fantasy, not on the NFL team right now, shouldn't be on a fantasy team. Edwards Lair again looking at multiple week absence, but he was basically absent for the Chiefs. And then Daryl Henderson, who knows what the situation is, but he's been bad even when healthy and active. So if he's banged up, easy move on from him. All right, we're gonna take a break right now. When we come back and get into the wide receiver and tight end options that you need off the waiver wire. We've been saying for weeks, add Donovan Peoples Jones. Now his price has gone up, you probably could pay a little bit more. We'll talk about just how rich it should be for DPJ rest of season on F50. Welcome back to Fantasy Football Today, presented by Snickers. Rookie mistake, maybe you just need a Snickers. I'm Jamie, that's Dave, that's Heath. We're looking at the wide receiver and tight end options for you off the waiver wire. And we'll start with the wide receivers to add for this week. This is always going to be the most fun position because there are plenty of options that could be potential difference makers for you, starting at the top with Donovan Peoples-Jones, who just continues to produce week in, week out, and has the long-term appeal with what could be when Deshaun Watson returns in week 13. Keith told you early in the show that Greg Dortch could be his favorite option off the waiver wire if Rondell Moore is out. He's coming off a strong Monday night game against the 49ers. Traylon Burks coming off a career game in week 11. Jamison Williams eligible return in week 12. And Sky Moore could be the best Chiefs wide receiver maybe for the foreseeable future depending on the injuries there in Kansas City. Some of these other guys could be very popular as well. We'll talk about a few of them as well. So let's get to the first one here in Donovan Peoples-Jones. So it's now been five games in a row with 11 or more PPR points. Finally scored his first touchdown in week 11 against the Bills in Detroit. And then you get the situation of Deshaun Watson potentially coming back. So Dave, how good can Donovan Peoples-Jones be this week with Jacoby Brissett and then rest of season with Watson? Well, if the weather holds up, Heath just scared me on the weather report in Cleveland this week. So if that holds up, then Peoples-Jones could be okay. But if it's snowy and windy, it could be trouble. But look, it's more of a rest of season look for Peoples-Jones. With Deshaun Watson coming back, that means an upgrade in targets, theoretically. And we've seen him live right around 11, 12, 13 PPR points. Last week, he kind of got lucky with people, Jones. He had a lot of catches, yards, and a touchdown on the last drive for the Browns. But it all counts in fantasy. He's going to be the number two receiver for Cleveland moving forward. I think he's a number three PPR receiver in fantasy. He would be my priority off the waiver wire at wide receiver. And I would still prefer him. I made the top about Greg Dorch going to the top of the waiver wire list. He goes number two right behind Donovan Peoples-Jones just because we don't think Dorch will hold on to that role for the rest of the season. Peoples-Jones should be the guy for the rest of the season. But it is similar to the running back situation. Right. While you like Murray better than P. Ryan long term, you would start P. Ryan over Murray for this week. And right. you'd probably start Dorch over Peoples-Jones for this week if there yeah. is no Rondo Moore. I totally get it. You know, so if you're just looking at a one-week situation, Greg Dorch again, Rondo Moore, we're, we're anticipating not playing in week 12. So Dorch has that slot role most likely occupied for the Cardinals. Uh, Traylon Burks, as we have talked about for uh, a few days now because his game was on Thursday last week against the Packers. He had his best game of the season, over 100 yards receiving. And I think a lot of people look at it and say, well, he got a 51-yard catch at the end of that game that sort of boosted his numbers. He still had six for 50 before that, which would have been his best game of the season. But it's now back-to-back -back weeks with 
uh, at least six targets, and it seems like Heafy's trending in the right direction. We don't know where he would have been if he didn't have that toe injury, so could be set up for a good, strong finish. This is a guy who's had a hard time, it seems like, getting on the right side of the coaching staff, being, being doing the thing he's supposed to be doing. I was actually encouraged by the fact they threw that pass to him at the end of the game. It was almost like, a, hey, good for you. You had a good game. Let's give you one more at the end of the game. So I, I expect big things. We said it with Christian Watson two weeks ago. When a rookie wide receiver breaks out in the second half of the season, I'm far more likely to believe that when a third or fourth or fifth year guy does it. I want to go get Traylon Burks and Adam. Yeah, it should be fun to see where he goes from here. Tough matchup against the Bengals, at least on paper again, but uh, hopefully the targets still are there for him with 14 targets in his last two games. And don't overlook Robert Woods, 14 targets his last two games as well. So they are starting to throw the ball a little more as Dave alluded to when we talked about Ryan Tano. So Dave, Jamison Williams not going to most likely play in week 12 because they play on a short week on Thursday, but then the window is now open for him to return. Yep. What's your excitement level for uh, one of the prize rookie wide receivers this year? It's pretty high because I know what the talent level is with this young man. He's, he's like Christian Watson in that he's tall, lean, and very, very fast. But I think he's way more experienced and polished compared to Christian Watson. Still not the most polished receiver that came out of this draft class. I would give that to Olave or Garrett Wilson. But he's going to make plays when he gets into this offense. He helps them in two ways. Number one, he's the deep target, just like Traylon Burks was, just like Christian Watson was. And number two, he's going to open things up underneath. The question is, will Jared Goff get him the ball? I think he might be able to at times. You want to take the advantage of him being potentially a league winner among the rookie wide receivers as a number three guy, and you don't have to make him your top waiver priority unless you want to. And if I've got a team with eight or more wins and I'm good at wide receiver, he's going to be my priority off the waiver line. And, you know, there's some people that haven't been stashing him in an IR spot because you may have had some other players there make sure you can find a way to get him on your team if you do have an IR spot because it's been worth it should be worth your while to close the season Heath again Juju Smith-Schuster concussion protocol we don't know if he's going to play in week 12 you got Michael Hartman on IR now Kadarius Tony's dealing with a hamstring injury Sky Moore had six targets in the game against the Chargers this past week to lead the team Justin Watson still there Michael Mar Marcos Valdez scaling for what it's worth still there uh, obviously Travis Kelsey's on a different level but right. if Sky Moore is the guy Potentially, how much interest do you have in him? Absolutely. And same thing, a rookie wide receiver, second half of the season, having his best game of the season, season high in targets, catches, yards, and snap rates, still just 42% of the snaps. If that could get up around 60%, then I think you'd have a chance to have a number three slash number two wide receiver. It's going to depend really on Juju Smith-Schuster, whether he can get back. We'll have a hard time trusting Kadarius Tony until we yeah. see him back on the field. Uh, just real quick before we move on to the wide receiver's job, put the list of most added, or most the, the wide receivers to add up real quick if we can. I just want to ask the guys a quick, quick question in regard to other names in there, because there are a lot of names under Nico Collins, Demarcus Robinson. Is, is there anybody from Demarcus Robinson down that you would take over the top five guys, Dave? Just name them. No, I don't think so. Heath? Nope. I know you like Demarcus Robinson, though, so I thought yeah, maybe that yeah, would be Yeah, I would like Nico over Demarcus Robinson, though, still. So, yeah, those guys would be behind too. A lot of wide receivers to add this week. Yeah, it's a, it's a good position. You can also look at Richie James, too. He had three of his catch. All three of his targets came after Wanda Robinson got hurt, so another guy to look at just based on opportunity. And you could look at all these guys over the wide receivers that we're looking at to drop and move on from. So, Cooper Cup with the news now that he's probably going to miss the rest of the season. No need to stash him at this point unless you're absolutely holding out hope or maybe you play into week 18. Uh, but at this point, probably they're going to shut down uh, Cooper Cup, the Rams at 3-7, and seven, out of playoff contention. Deontay Johnson, just another miserable game. Easy move on from him. Certainly in non-PBR and half PBR, where he has yet to score a touchdown. Brandon Cook's only one touchdown on the season. Easy to move on from him. Devin Duvernay has yet to materialize as the guy the Ravens, I'm sure, were hoping for. And Chase Claypool has... Minimal production in three games with the Bears. Maybe that changes with Trevor Simeon, but hard to hold out hope for that. And so it's easy to move on from those guys. The tight ends that we're looking to add for this week, Evan Ingram leads the list, so it tells you where we are with the tight ends. Uh, Jawan Johnson, he's now the poster boy for touchdown or bust, but he's doing a great job. Austin Hooper might be that guy, scoring now in uh, two touchdowns last week. We'll see what happens moving forward. Keith talked me into Foster Moreau for one more week because he gets the Seahawks, and then Logan Thomas coming off of his best game. So these are, again, the guys that we're looking at here. So we'll start with Evan Ingram, Heath, and this is a guy that's been productive. A lot of people dropped him going into the bye week. Tough matchup against Baltimore. How do we think he'll do in Week 12? I, I am very concerned about him in Week 12. He only has six targets in his last two games. He's got four passes for 22 yards. He's only scored one touchdown all season long. And this Baltimore defense might be pretty tough moving forward the rest of the season. So I would actually add Juwan Johnson over Evan Ingram, but he's a high-end number two. Would, and, would you take Ingram rest of season over Juwan Johnson, or are you just not even bothering I don't to really, play that game because you can go week to week and hope that Ingram or someone like him 
will be out. Right. Neither one of them have a good matchup this week. It's a no. terrible matchup for both. But I would sure. just, I, I'm going to bet on Juwan Johnson scoring a touchdown <laughs> over Evan Ingram getting to 40 yards. Imagine saying that at the start of the season. I'm going to bet on Juwan Johnson scoring touchdowns. All right. So Johnson, again, he's been uh, very good at finding the end zone mm -hmm. of late. And so with a team that is trying to, I think, figure out the quarterback situation, we don't exactly know uh, how long Andy Dalton will hold on to the job. But you see his production here since week six. He's in some pretty nice company here. So can this be somewhat sustainable, Dave? I think it can be fairly sustainable from the perspective that he's going to play a lot for New Orleans. He's going to run a lot of routes. He's going to play a lot of snaps. Will he get a ton of targets? Two games ago, he had a 25% target share. I believe he was under 16% target share last week. Not so good, but he still had the end zone visit. I think New Orleans is looking for that third pass catcher. They know that Chris Olave is a stud. Jarvis Landry's there. He's that short area target. Who else can help stretch defenses? We saw Rashid Shaheed get a lot more route participation last week. I wonder if Johnson can evolve into that role a little bit more. When I looked at that tight end list that you showed, I saw a bunch of names of guys that could get you around 10 PPR points. I think he's probably the safest to do it. No, he might get more than that, though, if he scores. Right. And so that's kind of what you're hoping for for him. And probably the same thing for Austin Hooper, who's actually seen his production uptick You know, mm -hmm. in the last two weeks. He has 11 targets over that span, scored twice last week. One of them was on the jump pass from uh, Derrick Henry. But we've talked a lot about the Titans and just their passing game starting to improve a little bit. And this guy's been a big reason why. Seven targets, five for 41 against Denver, and then four for 36 on four targets with the two touchdowns against the Packers. Heath, is this a guy trending in the right direction for you? He's absolutely trending in the right direction. He's towards the bottom of the list, but you're just hoping that he gets into the end zone. That's what we're kind of hoping with all these guys. He at least has a longer pedigree than some of these guys of good fantasy production. Again, I'm not sure it's a great matchup against Cincinnati this week, though. We'll see, though. Their defense has just been so spotty because of who the competition has been. A lot of backup right. quarterbacks, a lot of bad quarterbacks, and so mm -hmm. Pat Fryermuth did just have a big game against that team, right. so maybe Austin Hooper can follow suit. The tight ends are moving on from Kyle Pitts. Again, we don't know when he's going to play again. If he does, Taysom Hill, easy move on from him because he's just not getting the job done, even though he did get nine carries, but has scored eight PPR points or less since that big breakout game against Seattle, and Robert Tunyon's just been an absolute travesty, unfortunately, so easy move on from him as well.